Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So guys, let's begin today's class on a very positive note. Before coming here for the class, I was discussing this quote with my colleagues. And do you know what that quote is? When hard work, hard work can beat talent when talent refuses to work hard. How beautiful line is this? This is really uh, very beautiful and very true. Jab aap के पास टैलेंट है अगर आप हार्ड वर्क नहीं कर रहे हो तो आपका टैलेंट भी बेकार हो जाएगा रद्दी हो जाएगा इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू रीप एनी बेनिफिट्स फॉर यू बट इन केस यू डोंट हैव टैलेंट एंड यू आर कंसिस्टेंट इन योर हार्ड वर्क देन डेफिनेटली यू कैन बीट द पीपल हु आर मोर टैलेंटेड देन यू और वैसे तो टैलेंट एज सच कुछ है होता नहीं है इट्स नॉट एन ऑब्जेक्टिव क्राइटेरिया दैट दिस पर्सन इज टैलेंटेड एंड दिस पर्सन इज नॉट एवरी वन इज टैलेंटेड इन देयर ओन वेज हाउ इफ यू टॉक अबाउट दिस वन रेस of competitive examinations so yes if someone has a better memory power so that is that person's talent but on the other hand if you do not have that talent in you and you are working hard towards it then definitely you can beat the person with the talent okay so hard work can beat the talent when talent refuses to work hard to agar aapke paas talent hai na guys so make sure that you use that talent to achieve your dreams don't let your talent rust Okay on that note let's begin today's class I hope guys you have already uh, downloaded the mobile application of ours so let's begin with the question number 1 Where was the 23rd edition of the India International Seafood Show held okay so a lot of things are going on at present related to the marine exports we have been discussing about the marine export target now we have this seafood show organized in india so you can clearly see that seafood or the marine economy is being focused upon by the government of india so what is your responsibility your responsibility is to keep a track of all the things which are going on okay so let me first tell you the answer of this question so here guys kolkata is the right answer kolkata uh, mein fish making jo hoti hai that is also very famous the dishes the fish related dishes are very famous from kolkata and from there you can try to memorize that kolkata ki machhi sabse achhi banti hai isliye waha pe hi machhi ka bazaar laga theek hai seafood show okay now before going into the detail of this news let me tell you that we are talking about the marine economy we are talking about the blue economy blue economy is the term which is used for the marine ecosystem and the economic benefits that we derive from it so do you know that in order to raise money for the sustainable economic uh, sustainable ocean projects we have a specific bond which is called blue bond and in the in india the blue bonds and yellow bonds which are for the solar power projects are launched under the green bonds they are basically the sub part from the green bonds okay so that was the information that all of you should be aware of now guys 23rd edition of the India International Seafood Show was organized. कहाँ पर हुआ था कोलकाता में बिकॉज कोलकाता हैज द वेरी फेमस फिश मार्केट मतलब फिश की डिशेज वहां पर सबसे अच्छी बनती है अगर आप ऐसा मानना चाहें तो ठीक है ऑर्गेनाइजर्स मरीन प्रोडक्ट एक्सपोर्ट डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी एंड द सी फूड एक्सपोर्टर्स एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंडिया नाउ दिस एम पी डा इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच हैज बिन क्रिएटेड टू एक्सपोर्ट increase the exports of the marine products in india so can any one of you tell me who is the current head of this organization this is your first question now coming back to the news so i hope you are following my current affairs on a daily basis and if you are watching the videos then you would have come across the statement in a previous video as well okay because last week only i taught you that india has almost doubled the target of marine exports okay so let's first see how much export did we do in the previous year and how much are we targeting for the coming year so firstly in fy22 india exported 13 lakh tons of marine products okay 13 lakh hi aapko yaad rakhna hai you just need to remember the approximate term because nobody is going to ask you this exact number so clearly exact number is not very important 
13 lakh tons of marine products were exported and out of this 7.76 billion us dollars uh, money was created by exporting this much amount and now we have doubled the target up to usd 14 billion okay and this target is not for the one year not for 2023 to 2024 this is to be achieved by the year 2025 okay so do remember this fact as well we have given ourselves a time span of two years okay this year and the year ahead now one more thing we are talking about the marine products export so do you know which product is the most demanded product in the international market from india so guys it is shrimp it is a fish which is majorly exported matlab india ke jitne bhi marine products export kiye jate hain out of those products shrimp is the most uh, shrimp is the biggest contributor theek hai so this is the product which is in high demand and which contributes a lot in the marine exports now this i have already taught you one more thing that you would find this statement also in many newspapers so understand this point that this 1 lakh crore target or this 14 billion is one and the same thing it's just the difference of the exchange rate because it is in indian currency and it is in us dollar okay so if you find a newspaper heading stating that 1 lakh crore rupee is the target for marine exports or if you find this statement, then do not get confused because both of these are one and the same thing. Okay, so now guys, I hope all of you are aware that fisheries is a part of the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairy. So this ministry has in total four schemes which are going on and these schemes are flagship schemes. Okay, so you can expect any question out of this. Now, if we talk about the fisheries sector, then particularly we have this scheme, PM Matasya Sampada Yojana, which we have talked a lot. Okay? Then, achha, let me tell you one more fact that this is a central sponsored scheme. Okay, so states also have a contribution in this scheme. It is not entirely funded by the center. And the total budget of this scheme is rupees 20,050 crore. Okay. So now I am eager to ask a question from you and that question is, can anyone of you tell me how much is the center's share in it and how much is the state's share in this total budget? Can anyone of you tell me that? Now coming back to the slide, second important scheme here is Special lively, uh, Livestock Sector Package. Then National Digital Livestock Mission Blueprint. <coughs> dairy investor investment accelerator so these are the other schemes of the ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairy and guys please cover these schemes thoroughly because agriculture and the livestock and the animal husbandry these are the sectors where the government is focusing very intensively the schemes related to agriculture are launched rampantly and you you uh, must have seen the news related to the modernization and introduction of technology in the agriculture in the farming sector in the dairying sector and also in the animal husbandry sector okay so don't just restrict yourself to this much that we are the rga students so from us only the banking related questions would be asked these kinds of questions can also be asked and do remember that government schemes are a very crucial part and an integral part of your RBI preparation and these are just the government schemes okay so cover all of these government schemes one or two someday I will also try to discuss these schemes in detail but if I would not be able to do that then we already have the government schemes playlist on our YouTube channel you can watch the schemes by Manish so uh, uh, in that playlist okay Okay, so let's move on to the next question or I was discussing about the blue bond and here we have a question related to the green bonds. So which municipal corporation has launched the green bond for setting up the solar power plant? So here Indore Municipal Corporation is the right answer. Now if you have a question in your mind that why not yellow bond was issued. So guys understand this point that yellow bond is a subset 
of green bond okay so even if they are not mentioning that it is a yellow bond it would ultimately be a yellow bond or it would come under the green bond only okay kyunki yellow bond green bond ka hi subset hai so we can clearly uh, use these terms interchangeably theek hai so uh, indore municipal corporation has launched the green bonds for setting up the solar power plant and one more thing green bonds are there in the market and many organizations have already been issuing the green bonds but yellow bond concept is very new okay so it will take some time to the companies to the market to adjust with the yellow bond criteria and issue those yellow bonds so abhi ke liye just remember that it is the green bond that has been launched by the indore municipal corporation and the purpose of this green bond is to set up a solar power plant ठीक है ना इससे पहले भी ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स इशू किए गए हैं बाय द म्यूनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन बट नो ग्रीन बॉन्ड वाज स्पेसिफिकली इशूड फॉर सेटिंग अप अ सोलर पावर प्लांट सो इट इज अ फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड ग्रीन बॉन्ड स्पेसिफिकली फॉर अ सोलर पावर प्लांट ठीक है नाउ दिस मच अमाउंट विल बी रेस्ड एंड द सोलर पावर प्लांट विल बी ऑफ सिक्सटी मेगा कैपेसिटी ओके नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द ग्रीन बॉन्ड सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू to remember the total amount which will be raised through that bond okay so i have already told you that it is the first of its kind offering by any civic body in the country in the capital market okay because isse pehle bhi green bonds issue hain but for solar power there was no specific green bond so this is the first of its kind now we are talking about the green bonds so do you know that which cities municipal corporation issued the green bond for the first time now if pune is coming in your mind then guys you are mistaken here okay the right answer is bangalore bangalore had launched the first green bond way back in 1990s okay then came pune in 2017 and then recently in 2022 vadodara has also launched the green bond but whenever you see the newspaper headlines the newspaper headlines would always mention that pune is the first city to launch the green bond but why are they saying so the reason is that pune and vadodara both of them have launched the green bonds in association with us treasury department however the green bond which bangalore issued was launched on its own okay bangalore did not take the help of any foreign institution to launch the municipal bond and that makes bangalore and pune both the first cities to launch the green bond green municipal sorry sorry green municipal bond nahi municipal bond okay green municipal bond to bahut recently launch kiya gaya hai but i am talking about the municipal bonds so first municipal bond was launched by bangalore uh, indi uh, individually then pune launched the municipal bond in 2017 and this municipal bond was launched in collaboration with us treasury department and then vadodara has also launched the municipal bond and it became the second city after pune to launch the municipal bond okay so please guys make sure that it is the municipal bond and not the green bond which i was just telling you it's not the green bond it's the municipal bond okay and here we are particularly talking about the green bond which indore municipal corporation has launched okay so uh, one or uh, two days back i was watching a comment on my video that you guys want to have a screenshot of what i write on the board so guys take a screenshot i'm just going aside so i hope you would have taken a screenshot of this now let's move on to the question number 3 so which of the following statement is are correct with respect to the kavach 2023 a national level hackathon okay first is the hackathon has been launched by aict uh, cte and ministry of education the hackathon has been launched by ugc ministry of education and bureau of police research and development the hackathon has been launched to innovate on the cyber security and cyber crime challenges so which is the right answer so here guys option 1 and option 3 are the right statements so here option c is your right answer okay so we have the aict aicte 
Ministry of Education and Bureau of Police Research and Development. All these three organizations have launched this hackathon. And the basic idea of this hackathon is to invite the innovators so that they develop technologies that will help in catering to the needs of cyber security and fight against the cyber crime. Okay. Now here guys, before moving ahead, I want to ask from you, do you guys know what is juice jacking? Now this is a medium of cyber crime and this was a question either in your SEBI examination or NABAD exam GA. I don't remember the exam exactly but definitely I remember that this is the question in your past year. So can any one of you tell me what is the meaning of this term juice jacking? How is cyber crime done through this technology or through this method okay now <coughs> uh, okay so here guys we have the three agencies the innovation cell of the ministry of education the aicte bureau of police research and development under the ministry of home affairs and the Indian Cyber Crime Control Crime Coordination Center, that is I4C, under the Ministry of Home Affairs, these four organizations have come together to launch this hackathon. Okay, so this hackathon uh, will uh, will invite the students, the researchers, and the innovators to innovate on the technologies which we have already heard. Now, guys, recently RBI has also launched its Harbinger hackathon which is the global hackathon of RBI and it was the second edition of that hackathon. I hope you have covered this hackathon from Karnima ma'am's video RBI 247 so it and in spotlight also uh, this hackathon is present. So this hackathon invites the innovators to give solutions on four dimensions on four verticals. There are four problems which have been identified in this global hackathon and remember that it has been organized by RBI. Okay and in this hackathon there are four problem statements on which the innovators the startups will have to create technology. Now my question from all of you is you have to tell me the four areas on which the people will innovate. Okay because this is a already taught topic the Kanima ma'am has already taught you this thing from the phase two perspective. So I want to just check how much are you prepared and what approach are you following? Are you following an integrated approach or are you just picking up subjects randomly? Okay, because do remember if you don't have a destined and strategic path, you won't be able to reach your destination. You will always wander in the uh, in the course only, okay? in the path only. So tell me the four areas moving on to the next question so which iit hosts the international center of excellence on dam safety again a very important question so here guys iit drudki is the right answer so central water commission and the iit drudki have set up this center uh, this International Center of Excellence on Dam Safety. Okay, uh, if you remember that U United Nations University had also released a report one or two years back on the aging of dams. Okay. So as per this report, majority of the dams in the world are aging and they are on the verge of get, getting damaged or completely uh, getting destroyed by any calamity okay? because they are getting very old. And from India, there was one dam which was mentioned and very serious risk is against that dam and that dam is Mulla Peria Dam. Although in India, we have many dams which are aging and which were mentioned in this report but Mullah Peria Dam was given a special attention because this is uh, a colonial time break uh, dam and it is right now on the verge of getting collapsed okay so uh, that was the reporting of this report I will tell you about this Mullah Peria Dam as well but just let's uh, de delve deep into this 
news first okay then we will discuss about the damage so the center will be developed at the rudki iit rudki and uh, the ministry of jal shakti is going to provide this much amount to the rudki so that the institute set up this center then the international center of excellence will focus on different areas for example safety and rehabilitation of dams like hydrological hydraulic structural geotechnical seismic etc etc which is not of our not of any importance for us okay so we can clearly skip this point but do remember rudki has established this uh, center and ministry of jal shakti is providing the financial support for this center okay otherwise the question can be twisted in this manner like which agency is providing the funding for this institution and if in the options you get central water commission as well then you will definitely get confused okay so don't get confused and remember that it is ministry of jal shakti which is giving financial fund, uh, aid to the it rudki for setting up this center now guys sabse pehle we are going to talk about the important dams in india so highest dam in india is the tehri dam in uttarakhand then the longest dam in india is the hirakud dam which is in odisha and the oldest dam in india is the kalanai dam in tamil nadu now i was talking about the mulla perrier dam so guys mulla perrier dam uh, this is this is guys mulla perrier dam and this is kerala this is tamil nadu okay it is written here so kerala and tamil nadu this dam is entirely located in kerala and tamil nadu at present operates the dam because this dam has was given on lease to tamil nadu by the britishers okay at that time it was the madras presidency so um, thanjavur uh, travancore princely state had given the lease of this dam to the madras presidency because everything was under the control of britishers now after independence also the dispute uh, was there between tamil nadu and kerala okay because uh, when the reservoir reaches its limit so many villages in kerala gets flooded and a uh, major floods came in the villages of kerala 2018 mein ya 2019 mein because of the mulla perrier dam only because heavy rains were there and out because of that the reservoir reached its limit and the surrounding villages get flooded because tamil nadu released a lot of water from this dam so that is the entire dispute going on between kerala and tamil nadu related to the mulla perrier dam and because of that only the structural repair repair work of the mulla perrier dam is also not getting completed to that effectiveness to that efficiency which is needed by the dam okay so that is the scenario one more dam is there uh, which is there in the news and this is the mekkedil datu dam now remember it is a proposed dam it is proposed between karnataka and tamil nadu on kaveri river and we all know that there is a dispute between these two states related to the water sharing of the kaveri river and because of that dispute this dam was not completed and it remained in its proposed state only okay now no work is going on on this mekedatu uh, dam okay so these are two dams which remain in the news because of this uh, this tussle between the states and i have already told you about the major important dams in india now let's move on to question number 5 so what is india's rank in the services trade restrictiveness index so here 47th is the rank of india this index is released by oecd the organization for uh, economic cooperation and development so it is an organization of 38 member nations and it is uh, an organization where all the member countries are the developed countries okay so this organization has released this service trade restrictiveness index and india's rank has improved in this index earlier india's rank was 48th out of 50 now it is 47 out of 50 okay although it is a very marginal improvement but improvement is improvement and if you are also improving in your test in your preparation then consider that improvement okay agar aap 10 mein se do answer bhi de pa rahe ho na pehle ke comparison mein zyada 
तो उस इम्प्रूवमेंट को भी कंसिडर करो अपनी ठीक है और डोंट ऑलवेज लुक एट द नेगेटिव साइड ऑल्सो ट्राई टू अप्रिशिएट योर स्मॉल विक्ट्रीज इन अ डे ओके सो कमिंग बैक टू द न्यूज सो दिस इंडेक्स वॉज रिलीज बाय ओ सी वी फॉर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इंडिया रैंक इज फोर्टी सेवेंथ अप फ्रॉम फोर्टी एट फिफ्टी कंट्रीज आर देयर इन टोटल एंड वॉट आर द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ दिस इंडेक्स सो फर्स्ट पैरामीटर इज दैट इट takes into account the government policies uh, in several sectors that define the ease of trading in those sectors and industries so on the basis of the government policies and the ease of trading in india or generally the index gives the ranking and score so score is 0 and 1 so in between this range the scores are given by this index and uh, we have been given this list i hope this picture is visible to all of you okay so this is the picture i hope all of you can clearly see it now so here india's position is 47th and here is india okay and here we have been given the oecd as a collect collective look then we have japan at the first position okay so this much is enough for you to remember don't go into each and every country that is not required now guys here we have been given the top 5 and bottom 5 <coughs> in the bottom 5 india is also there and in the top 5 japan is first then uk netherland czech republic and china these are the five countries okay so that much is enough from this news so here guys this video ends if you find this video useful then do share it among your friends and also in case you have any query do mention it in the comment section you can use discussions forum as well we have a telegram channel also so you can use these many channels if you have any query or if you have any feedback for all of us thank you so much guys have a good day and prepare heart